Welcome to Dear Sandy. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to talk a little bit about what's happening with the Cornell Cooperative Extension. And some people may think of it as 4-H, um, but I'm really excited to have the new executive director of the Putnam County Cooperative Extension, um, Stephanie Hubert. Welcome. Thank you. And you have been, um, I guess, the new executive director for about three quarters of a year or something like that? Actually, I just finished my first quarter. I okay. started officially in January 1st of this year. So I'm actually the fifth executive director for Putnam County. And prior to that, I worked at the Orange County Cooperative Extension. So when was, so we have this, um, we, tell us about the Cooperative Extension. I, I believe they're all over the state of New York. Sure. So actually, um, Cornell Cooperative Extension has one association in every county within New York State. And then the extension agencies are part of a national cooperative extension for which there's a land, at least one land-grant university in every state. Mm -hmm. So our land-grant university is Cornell University up that, in Ithaca. That's correct, that's correct. And we're a little unique in the sense that Cornell University receives both public and private mm -hmm. funding, so. Right, well, because I know in our state budget, we actually have public funding uh, to go to Cooperative Extension that's and Cornell Cooperative Extension. That's correct. That's our um, 224 dollars mm -hmm. and comes in through the SUNY system. That's exactly correct. Right. And um, how long has the Putnam County Cooperative Extension been in existence? It's been in existence since 1944. So it's one of the younger Cooperative Extension associations within New York State. But since 1944, we've managed to uh, continue a strong and unique um, collaboration with Putnam County government. Mm -hmm. So we're very, very pleased that our services and the programs that we offer are embraced not only by the uh, Putnam County government, but also by our constituents that mm -hmm. live in Putnam County. So you're in Putnam. I also have Westchester mm -hmm. in my district, and mm -hmm. they also have a cooperative extension. That's correct. That's correct. Um, you know, each of the extension associations look at who the demographics are within their county, and so programming mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. look a little bit different depending on which county you live in. Um, in Putnam County, we concentrate on 4-H programming as well as um, horticulture and natural resources. And so in Orange County, for instance, where I came from, we also had um, family consumer sciences in addition to 4-H and agriculture. And in Westchester, you also have a, a huge 4-H program. So, you know, it just, it... You really have to look at the people that you're serving. Exactly. And I suppose what their, well, what their interests are, but you might try to interest them in something that they should be interested Absolutely. in, I suppose. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, we pride ourselves on um, responding to emerging issues, and part of what we're really good at at Cooperative Extension is really doing needs assessments. So, where mm -hmm. are the deficits in the county? Um, where are the issues that need to be addressed? And we're very fortunate that we have all types of researchers and professors at Cornell University that take a look at the problems. They, they provide us with research and evidence-based solutions. And then we're sort of the outreach arm of Cornell, Co mm -hmm. or Cornell University when we take that knowledge and research back to the community. So um, if, if the researchers, I really didn't know that. Um, so you have researchers at Cornell, mm -hmm. and, if, and if they think that an area really needs uh, more focus on dietary issues mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, farm to schools, uh, getting the fresh produce in the schools, mm -hmm. they would identify that. It, I, 
it probably is a problem all over the state. Yes. <laughs> so yes. I'm not, not fine-tuning Putnam, but I suppose that's what they come up with, statistics? Absolutely, absolutely. So, for instance, we'll take, um, and, and your points are absolutely valid, they're, they're much more universal than something mm -hmm. like when Lyme disease maybe moved over mm -hmm. from Connecticut into Putnam County and then up at the university, those professors that had an extension appointment started focusing on, hey, there's an overabundance of ticks in the area, people are getting bitten, and then provided us with that research-based information to protect ourselves, to mm -hmm. deplete the tick um, populations in the area. So yes, anything like that. Mm -hmm. I know I've seen pamphlets that you've had um, you know, to, to deal with the tick issue. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and not all the state of New York does have a tick problem. Correct. So, um, and, I, and I guess we probably have the tick problem this summer, don't we? Uh, is it know, going away? You know what? I've already picked two ticks off of me and a few off my dog. So, yes, uh, they're coming. They're fast and furious. Right. So that, that happens. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about, I mean, the, the, the part I guess I love the most about cooperative extension are plants. Okay. Flowers. Sure. Um, you know, I, we, we'll talk about vegetables too, we, but um, I'm, I'm one of these gardeners and I'm a gardener with flowers. And I know you have a master, I've never been a master gardener, but you have programs that really, I assume you have programs for young people just mm -hmm. to, to get them to love planting and mm -hmm. flowers and so on mm -hmm. and then you have it for more experienced people and so so you have gradations of, of how you train people and teach people sure sure we have programming that reach all um, avenues on the spectrum on the continuum we have definitely gardening for young children and we have novice adults and then we have experienced adults and so gardening and horticulture are really one of the more popular programs that we have at Putnam County mm -hmm. and um, I think you were um, starting to comment on the master gardeners and the mm -hmm. master gardeners are a cadre of volunteers uh, currently we have 86 of them and they go through a, a very intensive learning year if you will to really gain that knowledge to be called master gardeners and then our Master gardeners do things from manning our garden helpline so mm -hmm. people can call in or email with any questions that they may have related to their soil or flowers. Um, they can bring uh, foliage and vegetation into our office to be identified. We have lots of community service pop-up activities across the county, ask a master gardener. Mm -hmm. um, they really are, you know, they allow us to be able to reach more constituents of Putnam County. So it's a train the trainer mm -hmm. model, mm -hmm. if you will. So they can probably look at a plant and say what the name of that plant they is. They sure probably. can. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to they, me just loving the plant. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And give you really from soup to nuts, you know, what type of um, fertilizer the plant mm -hmm, would mm -hmm. use best, uh, how much water to give it, is it a shade loving or a sun loving plant, really all the intricacies to really grow that plant accordingly. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you mentioned that you have headquarters someplace. Where where does one go, you know, if they have a leaf, if they've got brown spots on their plants and whatever, want somebody to look at it? Sure. Uh, you have a place for people to go? We absolutely do. So uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension Putnam's County office is one Geneva Road in Brewster. So we're up by the DMV and the Department mm -hmm. of Health. Right, good and good location. Yes, and good our location. office hours are nine to five, and when we switch to summer hours, it's eight to four. Mm -hmm. So, but always call ahead of time. Make sure there's a master gardener or an educator in the office. There usually are, are but you never know when someone mm -hmm. gets called out, and we're happy to identify, provide information, whatever needs to be mm -hmm. done. So, do the master gardeners also get involved in fruits and vegetables, or is that a different category. Well, they can. Uh -huh. They can. Master gardeners uh, really 
are able to gain additional information in the areas that interest them. So we have master gardeners who are experts and native plants. We have mm -hmm. master gardeners that are experts in perennials, who fruit trees, but we mm -hmm. also belong to um, a, an additional part of cooperative extension that is the Eastern New York uh, horticulture. And so we have experts all the way up from Albany to uh, the Canadian border and they provide expertise in fruits and berries and mm -hmm. trees and those types of issues. So if someone comes to our extension or phones in and we don't have the exact answer, we know exactly mm -hmm. where to go to mm -hmm. get the answer. Right. Um, and so you said that it would take somebody almost a year to become a master gardener. It takes a while, a it lot does. of courses. It of does, courses. it does. I, I think there's like 19 or 20 modules and really mm -hmm. the, the educate or the volunteers that go through the master gardener training, it's, it's like a, a college course, really. Mm -hmm. there, there's homework, they have to give presentations, they, they need to have so many hours where they're answering calls and doing some research. It's, it's really a wonderful but laborious process. Mm -hmm. And once you become a master gardener, you're in for life. Seriously. Oh, I admire them when I hear that they are. <laughs> you know, I think we had talked about before, one of the questions came up as to the longest uh, volunteer. And so our longest volunteer in Putnam County is 37 years, and he's a master gardener. Oh, wow. And he's wow. still out there working with the community. Right, which is great. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about our children and and our our fruits and vegetables and and um, you know I, I guess you probably have programs to to let them know mm -hmm. that um, it just doesn't grow in the supermarket. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you pick up an apple or whatever, that yes. you really do that kind of training where where all of our food comes from? Sure, um, you know, and that's one of the issues that um, as we become a more uh, technology-based society for our youth who spend a lot of screen time, it um, mm -hmm. really prevents those youngsters from spending time in the wild and in nature. And so one of the things that we've been focusing on for more of the inner city schools um, or you know more metropolitan schools is really learning where your food comes from and that could be as simple as taste testing have you ever had this before do you mm -hmm. even know what it is to um, starting a school garden working with mm -hmm. the school mm -hmm. personnel to teaching um, programs out in the community and, and one of the programs that has happened over the last couple of years in Brewster is called From Seed to Supper and it is a nutrition education and gardening combined program that work with um, families and youth together mm -hmm. to grow and learn about the food and nutrients and at the end of the program what they grew they harvest and they mm -hmm. eat as a meal. I guess we're probably doing more of that with community gardens. Yes. I don't know whether what you're talking about is considered a community mm -hmm. garden, but well, the schools are doing community gardens, right. um, but people outside the schools Absolutely. are also doing that. Absolutely. So yes, many of our the schools in our area have uh, school gardens, and then there are several community gardens. In fact, we take care of and sort of oversee one of the community gardens that's on the property across from Tilly Foster and um, people purchase plots and mm -hmm. we have our master gardeners go out and some of our staff go out and work with the individuals and again to assist them with um, planting the seeds appropriately, how they weed, how we mm -hmm. water, mm -hmm. and then you know when is it time to harvest and if some of the plantings are unusual plantings then provide recipes so this mm. is the product Takes of the your whole, labor and right. here's how we can prepare it so you can enjoy it. And that's terrific because not everybody has uh, a plot at home mm -hmm. um, and they may live in a place where actually you might there might be a plot but no sun. Right. <laughs> right. You might need some sun. Right. Uh, so it, it does and 
you know, I know people that have done community gardening find that they meet so many wonderful people in that process. Yes, it's a learning as well as a social engagement, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm, sure. Right. So. Which, which is really great. So um, now I know that you've also, um, what you look to see what the community wants. And mm -hmm. I, I know you have fishing programs and I'm thinking about Putnam County. There are a lot of lakes in Putnam mm -hmm. County. I don't know whether, obviously in New York City, I think it's a little hard to do fishing sure. programs unless mm -hmm. people brought um, you know, the kids out or mm -hmm. adults out. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but probably that's been a very popular sport, I would think. It has been filled to maximum capacity historically, and um, we do run fishing clinics, one that happens to fall the weekend of the fair, and then they have another fishing clinic in the spring. And we are very fortunate that we have um, gentlemen from local sportsmen clubs who offer as volunteers their time to teach youth how mm -hmm. to fish and you know fishing habits mm -hmm. and the ecology of the water and the fish as well and um, the two clinics that we offer actually happen right at the uh, memorial park in in putnam so. Now, do they get to keep the fish, or is that they get thrown back in? I, or, I, well, whatever. Catch and release. Catch, catch and release is catch and release. much better. Yes, <laughs> yes, gently uh, released. Uh, yes, they, they don't. You know, it's just the, the spirit of actually mm -hmm. throwing the line in and, and catching a fish and, you know, reel it in, take a look at it. Maybe they measure it. Mm -hmm. They instruct the youth on how to properly remove the hook from mm -hmm. its mouth and then release it back into to nature. But right. it's exciting whether you get to keep the fish or not. It's exciting when you have a fish at the other end of your that's line. That's right, right, when your bobble goes down. <laughs> and sometimes that's very hard to find and you may have to sit there for quite some exactly. while. Patience is something that, exactly. that you also teach exactly. um, with the fishing. So, mm -hmm. so is that once during the summer that you do that or? Yes, we have a clinic in the spring and then we do it on the Saturday during the 4-H fair, which mm -hmm. is always mm -hmm. held the last weekend in July. Right. So I know, um, I think there were some pictures with, with uh, butterflies and bees and, mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. So what are you teaching um, the children or adults? Mm -hmm. Because not all adults know everything. So I'm sure you, you teach Correct. everybody. That's <laughs> right. We actually do. We do. So I think the pictures that you're referring to uh, have to do with the pollinator garden. And so anybody who is um, interested in plants and knows about pollination has probably heard in the news recently that the bee population is going down yeah, and that right, certainly right. can play a role in food production. Mm -hmm. And so a researcher or several researchers at Cornell University have started to really figure out um, what types of plants will actually draw the bee in and so our local um, extension educators at Putnam County received a grant to actually work under the professor to create a pollinator garden and then from there they took a 3d video of mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. and put it online where Consumers can log on, check mm -hmm. it out, learn a little, take a look and see what the flowers are and what plantings will be most suitable for bees. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. I, I remember getting, um, I have an area in Croton that does Postcard Tuesdays. and. I got a couple of postcards on the bee issue, mm -hmm. and you know it hadn't. I hadn't really thought about it. I think it came, you know, when it was snowing outside, mm -hmm. and I hadn't really thought about it. But then I realized, yes, we're losing our bees, and that is a major problem for us. Absolutely. I mean, that's how our plants um, move around. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So is that? What, what is the rationale? Are, are we going into this whole issue of greenhouse gases or climate change? Mm -hmm. is, is, do you think that's what's impacting uh, the bee population? Or, well, it's certainly impacting other kinds of mm -hmm. animals and, and so on. Um, and, and produce. And produce, Absolutely. right. Absolutely. So, 
you know, um, our educators take a look, like I said, at those emerging issues and then work with professors to really bring the most appropriate and current data back to Putnam County. Some of the programs that our educators have been working on specifically for climate change are programs called Climate Smart Communities. Mm -hmm. And that is where businesses, local businesses um, and communities, including agriculture, really receive information and knowledge to assist them if a severe storm comes. And uh, examples of that might be working with um, apple growers in our area, mm -hmm. which is very mm -hmm. popular, uh, working with professors to see which apples actually can sustain an early or a very late frost. So maybe mm -hmm. we have to mm -hmm. s start changing the types of apples that we grow. Uh, one of the other things that our educators work with along with our master gardeners is really providing education to homeowners and, and other individuals about um, storm water and uh, buffer planting and that of course helps when we have um, a myriad of rain. It helps mm -hmm. mitigate mm -hmm. that rain and that's really important because we want to make sure that we keep our water quality safe Mm -hmm. And in Putnam County, we have about 25% of our area is covered for the New York City uh, watershed Shed, district. Right, so, right. And there are also times of drought. Absolutely. Um, so, you mm -hmm. know, if people can save some of the rainwater mm -hmm. for a period of time. Yes. That's yes. So, so I think, you know, I, I do remember that I think you give courses on that. Uh, do you? I, I don't know whether you're still doing that. Yes, do you? yes. Um, the the um, the rain barrels. Uh huh. Yes, and so absolutely. Again, a practical information for a solution that we um, we may have to engage in in our area. I know that educators in the past have definitely worked with um, parks, I think, and maybe even the Department of Health to actually provide classes on making rain barrels. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I tend to think, or if the science says that we, we are having hotter, we're, we're, mm -hmm. our degrees are going up, mm -hmm. um, you know, slightly every year, mm -hmm. but after a while, that's, I keep thinking that we're going to be having the same plants that South Carolina has right now at some point, and that may be true. You, you probably are not far from the truth, and you're absolutely right, even though it may be a small increase in temperature but over time, it really adds up to degrees that perhaps we in the Hudson Valley are not used to. And so, yes, when you mm -hmm. look at where our growing areas are, we might be looking in the next, you know, two decades or so at plants that, that would be further south, mm -hmm. would be the norm. Right, so a lot of education that you're going to have to do. Or yes. we'll have to learn. Yes. <laughs> sure. yes. What, what are the... the I think one of the most wonderful things that you do in the summer, it's in July, mm -hmm. and um, you have this wonderful 4-H fair, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's just so much fun. It's so country, it's so different, it's it's not like a Disneyland mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's you, you walk in and, I don't know, you have pony rides and you have sheep and, and people have been growing tomatoes. Mm -hmm bigger tomatoes, they've been judged. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got bunnies running around that people have ha have on their own mm -hmm. and plants for sale. And it's just, it's just such a wonderful fair. And I'm assuming that that happens this year. Yes, it does. And, and thank you for, for saying all those nice things about our fair. We do um, really appreciate the fact that people come out year after mm -hmm. year after year because we are a true, wholesome, agriculture, good old country fair. Right you know, without the rides or mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. that, that um, other uh, types of events might have. And so the fair this year is the 26th, 27th, and 28th of July. It's always the last weekend in July. And we anticipate again this year having a very successful fair. Right, and I know that you have, um, well, sheep, 
Um, llamas. I mean, I guess every year might be a little different. Depending on what animals we can secure, but right. yes, we've mm -hmm. had llamas in the past. We're hoping, uh, we have a great partnership with Green Chimneys, and we're hoping mm -hmm. that their camels are well this year, so we can oh. bring camels to were the Were they fair. not well last year? But apparently they <laughs> weren't. I just learned this. They had a little stomach virus. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, right. Um, but yes, rabbits and, and uh, goats and sheep and cows and pigs and mm -hmm. horses, yes, chickens, all types of poultry, animals. It is definitely what you think of as a good old-fashioned agriculture fair. And what's so wonderful is that the young people involved with 4-H are there often explaining um, yes. their pet or what they've done or their project or their report. Um, and it's just, it's, you know, it's wonderful for all ages, actually, uh, to attend. So mm -hmm. I would encourage everybody that's watching to, to go to the fair. Absolutely. But you're right. It, the fair is really the showcase that provides the youth who have participated mm -hmm. all throughout the year to, to be able to show off their skills and everything that mm -hmm. they've learned. When do, the, we haven't really discussed, but when do these young people get together? Is it after school, weekends, summer, or all right, of the so above? All of the above. So we have traditional, um, 4-H groups that usually meet once a week or sometimes once every other week. Um, there's an adult sponsor or adult mm -hmm. volunteer and those could be very specific types of clubs. So maybe it's a robotics club, maybe it's a goat club, maybe mm -hmm. it's a Lego club. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have sort of one-time events where 4-H youth can get involved with and that would be perhaps maybe the fishing clinic that we spoke about about. Um, there are also opportunities for youth to participate in community service when they get mm -hmm. to be teenagers. That's mm -hmm. our, our, um, our TAG program or our teen advocacy group. We have opportunities for youth of all ages to participate in something called public presentations. Um, they that is a wonderful skill to develop. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Also, um, students have the opportunity to go to Cornell in the summer for three days for a program called Career, um, I forget what it's called. Career Opportunities. Car ca career whatever. Opportunities, um, where they go and talk to people about mm -hmm. different types of jobs and careers that they could partake in. Um, I'm trying That's to think. That's interesting, and, and, and we're talking about kids from age what to what? Five, I think five to eight is something called clover buds. So mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. the younger children, uh, younger youth, and then above that, it, it's their 4-H youth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So. Well, it's just such a wonderful program. Now, where can people um, contact 4-H so that or Cooperative Extension mm -hmm. so that they can find out about all these programs. Sure, so our website is one place for them to go. They can call our office, um, you know, they can they can pick up a brochure anywhere, mm -hmm. but really if they're really interested in participating in a class or to find out more information, then check out our website and to call us on our, on our phone. Right, well, Stephanie, I, I mean, you've just explored Cooperative Extension oh. in such a great way, uh, and hopefully we've gotten a lot of en enthusiasm on the part of the viewers. And you know whether you have want to go to the fair, be a master gardener, mm -hmm. or uh, whether you want to involve your children or your grandchildren in this, it's a wonderful opportunity. Yes, so. it is. Thank you very much. I for think letting thank, us share. Right, and thank you so much for being on the program. If there are any questions at all, please don't hesitate giving me a call at 914-941-1111. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good evening. Thanks.